Next up, we have Clean Tech Water, ASX code CNQ, market cap of around $21 million. The company is one of the world's most innovative water treatment companies. They provide a wide range of water treatment solutions to customers around the world. We have with us the CEO, Willem uh, Resendorf, who is going to present. He's the CEO. Willem, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, welcome, everybody, um, for um, a introduction of Clean Tech Water. Next slide, please. That's a disclaimer. Next slide, please. Um, Clean Tech Water has, oh, if you go to the previous one. Um, our mission is to deliver unique water treatment and metal recovery solutions uh, to accelerate the global transition to a sustainable economy. And I will explain what we mean by that. Next slide. So our ASX code is CNQ. As mentioned, uh, we listed in July 2021. So we're a year independent uh, on the ASX. Right now, we're supported by a number of very strong shareholders, among them Robert Friedland, that some of you might know, and Fidelity Investments. Next slide, please. So our business. So we really have three business units. Uh, our water technology solutions you see on the left, that's the biggest part of our business at the moment. It's the area where you will, where you have seen most of if you've been following our company for a while. Um, but we have two other business units. Uh, one is our metal recovery unit that's partly relying on a similar technology. Uh, in that unit, we have very deep expertise on recovery of metals. It's also the uh, unit where uh, we supporting Sunrise Energy Metals, so our old mother company with, um, and we're looking to deploy that deep expertise in other assets, in particular in tailings, uh, where our technology is very suitable of recovering uh, small amounts of valuable metals um, at a much lower cost than alternative technologies. Thirdly, graphene membranes. That has come to the front a bit more recently. We've been working on this development for the past eight years. Um, we're very excited about where we are right now, so we'll give a bit more um, detail on that in one of the next slides. Next slide, please. So in summary, um, the current state we are in, uh, I would say four important uh, points to emphasize. Number one, we have a unrivaled technology portfolio, a very strong set of solutions that are supported by extensive IP. That is uh, the reason for our recent success and our recent fast growth. It's also the strong underlying philosophy in our future outlook and our future commerci commercialization plans relying on technology to provide much better solutions to existing challenges. We've seen that resulting in a very strong momentum. I will explain a bit more about that momentum in a bit. We still have a very um, healthy pipeline going forward. So there's a lot of opportunity that we're seeing uh, for the near future. And then finally, what you saw on the previous slide as well, we have these two uh, business units, graphene memories and metal recovery that are very much part of the company um, and also very much uh, um, a potential to become a very substantial company and value driver in their own right. Um, that depending how, how our investors look at this at the moment can be seen as a substantial upside going forward. Next slide. So starting on what you saw on the left of the three business units are technology solutions. As mentioned, that's right now our most um, substantial part in terms of people and in terms of news flow, and it's the part that's generating our revenues at this moment. That's really built uh, on two technology platforms, especially the one you see here on the left, which is Ion Exchange. Ion Exchange is very suitable in recovering or targeting certain species. So that's both in water treatment, where you can pull out certain pollutants, and also in metal recovery, where you can recover certain valuable metals. And the way we use ion exchange is very different from how ion exchange is used by others. And that's creating this um, set of benefits and is also allowing us for a much wider application areas than others, which means we can target waste streams that no one else can target. It also means that we can apply this, for example, in mine tailings that the traditional method of using ion exchange uh, doesn't, doesn't allow for. A second one on the right, you see it's less, uh, you see less solutions are built on this, but it's still an important part of our basis. Um, and that's our uh, encapsulated bacteria. It's really a way to intensify bacterial processes by encapsulating only the bacteria that you want in a lens. 
And what it also does, it protects against harsh environments, which is why it has a lot of applications, for example, in mining, but also uh, in, in, in other brines, in industrial brines, basically in places where traditional, or where biology doesn't work anymore or works in a very poor way, very inefficiently. Aquaculture is another one where we recently got a lot of inquiries because in salt water, using traditional biology to break down the pollutants, the nutrients in that case, is very challenging. And our lenses enable that uh, to be done. Next slide. Then to, 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 to further uh, explain a little bit about pneumatic. So what we did in this third business uh, that's part of clean tech water, that's our graphene membrane technology. So what we've done uh, is developing a completely new way of um, building membranes, and that's built on graphene. So graphene has a number of very advantageous characteristics compared to the traditional membranes. The market is very, very large. So we're targeting a multi-billion dollar market there. And graphene provides as a benefit much lower um, energy costs, so much higher flux for a similar pressure, and also much better fouling characteristics, which is one of the major challenges in water treatment is that once you start using membranes, you tend to have a challenge with fouling. So these two benefits uh, we see as providing a lot of potential in the future. We've done earlier this year a commercial um, a production test. So we produce these membranes at a large scale. We produce 1,000 meters of them. And we've since put those graphene membranes into modules. You see that in the picture on the left uh, upper picture. And now we're building them into skits, which you see on the right upper corner of the pictures. Um, and that's the final step that we have to take to then start selling these membranes. And these membranes are, as I mentioned, entering a very, very large market. And that's a market that's right now being dominated by some very large companies like DuPont, like Koch Industries, which was mentioned earlier in one of the presentations. So it's a really big market. And we're really excited that after eight years, we're now ready for that final step towards commercialization. Um, to enable that and to really start that commercialization process and the actual selling process, we've also attracted a new CEO that's dedicated to making Nomadic grow. And that's David Menzies. You see him um, below on the, on the picture as well, who has a lot of experience with building companies and taking uh, new technologies into the market and commercializing them. Next slide, please. So now I'm back to the uh, water business or water solutions business, as we call it. So that's within clean tech water, the business where we provide integrated solutions, building on the core technologies that I introduced. So we've seen a lot of momentum since uh, 2017, when we really launched this as a new portfolio uh, towards um, the water sector. So initially we, we, we developed and we implemented our first large projects among them, Fosterville that was mentioned in earlier presentation as well. So for customers like that, um, the water treatment is not just a, a, a cost or a necessary thing uh, that the regulator requires. It's often also very essential for keeping operating um, because a lot of this, in a lot of those cases, the water balance and the ability to get a sort of, to properly discharge it, to properly treat it and to have enough can be a limiting factor for a lot of the uh, mines out there. And on the back of delivering those three projects you see on the left, you've seen a lot of growth. Uh, so you see that in this upward uh, uh, arrow, so more and more projects, project size is also increasing. So that has resulted, you can look at it on the right side of this graph, um, to very quick revenue growth. Um, and we're targeting continued very fast growth uh, of 75% on an annual basis. And if you followed the company over the last few months, you see that some of the major contracts and orders that came in uh, are already bringing us a very big step towards uh, reaching next year's target. So we're very optimistic of continuing this very fast growth. Next slide, please. So to give it a little bit more color, what are we doing? So I will uh, explain a little bit more about two recent uh, wins. So one is a uranium removal plant through IX, and um, that's in the Northern Territories. So that's uh, with local Aboriginal communities where there's a pollution problem, which means drinking water is not suitable anymore for those local communities. And our resin-based technologies is very suitable to resolve those problems. And in this case, for example, a major 
competing technology would be RO, or reverse osmosis membranes. And there's a huge number of benefits of using resins instead in terms of robustness, but also in terms of secondary waste and the ability to operate these plants in remote areas. So this project has now um, started. So we've, 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 we've ordered only items, uh, civils have started. And so we're going, um, we're well on our way to delivering this project. And it's part of a bigger development because there's, this is not the only community uh, where the government has plans to upgrade the uh, water uh, availability, the water security. Next slide, please. So the context here is groundwater. So groundwater is a good example to talk a bit more about. It's very important, it's very important for Australia. It's the second largest supply of water. It's economically very important, especially also for ag agriculture, but also for, for individuals. Um, and it has a lot of challenges. So groundwater, as opposed to uh, many river waters and, and much of the seawater is much more variable. There's uh, there's often very difficult elements in there, like scaling ions that create a lot of challenges for membranes. And it also has often specific pollutants that cause health hazards. Um, so example is uranium uh, of the project that we have, but there's others like nitrate and fluoride. And in all of these cases are resin technology that specifically targets these pollutants can then provide a lot of the benefits that I mentioned before. So much less secondary waste, um, much more robust, and therefore very suitable to be operated uh, remotely in, in, the, in the locations that we're talking about. Next, please. So another one that, that shows sort of the, the, the momentum we have is uh, an order we received for Townsville. For those of you who've been following the company, probably heard about Townsville because it's been a long time a few years ago that we first started um, working with Townsville, but now we received the order from our civil partner. The scope has changed over the last few years, so the new project is um, has, a, has a very large civil component. But we've been um, we've been receiving the order to do the um, water treatment uh, part of this very large project. This would be an order. Of, this is an order of around uh, ten million. And it's the first step of a uh, two-step, uh, at least for now it's two steps, um, uh, goal of providing, um, increasing the water security for Townsville. Next slide. So again, to put this in context, this is an example of municipal reuse. Municipal reuse is considered by many the most economic and a very large resource for additional water availability across uh, the world where cities and towns are struggling with water security. It's, for example, much more economical, much lower energy footprint than uh, seawater desalination. It also can have much less of secondary waste issue. And our technology, our technology portfolio is very suitable to enable that. And as you see, Israel is doing that very well right now. Singapore is doing that very well. There's many places around the world where they're looking at similar solutions. So we're very, uh, very very happy to start doing this in uh, Townsville now. Next slide. So then in summary, um, so I gave you a flavor of the strong tailwinds we have at the moment. Um, so you have obviously the overall trend of climate change, of lower energy costs, of increasing need for people to increase water availability and water security. And specifically for the markets we are targeting, you see additional demand for better solutions that we're providing. Secondly, we have seen very strong revenue growth and we're very optimistic of being able to continue that. Thirdly, acceleration. So the acceleration that we've been seeing, we, um, we hope to continue. There's a number of factors that will uh, enable that. One important one is more demonstration plans in new regions with new technologies and partners. So I didn't even discuss some of our international very large projects. So we've now seen a lot of growth in Australia and our goal is to have a similar fast growth in regions that we just entered, like oil and gas in the Middle East and um, the municipal sector in China. So with that growth, our margins that are very healthy on our projects will be with additional revenues enough to cover our fixed cost, and that will then enable us to become profitable in the next few years. And finally, I mentioned graphene membranes at the start and metal recovery. Both of these areas we see as having the potential to become very substantial businesses in their own right. And as you see, uh, as you saw with, for example, the graphene membranes, we're getting very close to starting that, uh, that growth trajectory for those businesses. Thank you for your attention.
Thanks, William. Um, perhaps we'll cover on some of those. Um, um, I'll ask some questions around those topics we didn't have time to touch on. In in the water treatment business, where, where, who's your typical client base? Is it a, a mining company that's kind of got environmental rehabilitation obligations? And so that's one typical sector that we're targeting. It's it's sort of the area we come from because a lot of the advanced solutions that we've been developing have been developed for the mining sector. And it's almost the area where all the challenges come together. So, 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 so that's one very important sector. And our typical customer is indeed the big uh, mining companies, like I mentioned earlier, Foster Wheel. But we, beyond that, now are targeting also industrial customers and municipal customers. But we are still very focused on the more challenging requirements of low energy cost and very high recycling. Uh, so that's really uh, our focus um, in, those, in those sectors. And, and you were talking about the, the graphene um, membrane business. Can you, can you talk through what the business model is there and, and how do those membranes, those graphene membranes, how do they compare with existing membranes in the market? Yes, of course. So the, the membrane business is if in water, if there's one business where you have a very high level of standardization across the world, it's membranes. So you have a couple of membranes that are being provided by companies like DuPont, um, so, so that's a, that's a very very large market where that high level of standardization allows a new entrant like us to then once you've proven yourself through the pilots that I mentioned to grow very very quickly because you effectively have standard specifications around those membranes that you can effectively slot into an existing design, but then the difference is that the characteristics that our membranes provide have substantial benefits, which is one energy, which is a very big concern and a cost factor. So you would buy lowering energy, lower the cost. And second, what I mentioned is the better fouling characteristics. But it's effectively then a consumable that you can uh, uh, use to then penetrate those very large markets that are global um, around the world. And, and uh, let, let's talk about international expansion. You've covered a lot in Australia, didn't have time to talk internationally. Can you give us some color there? Yes, so 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 indeed, uh, I thought given given the audience, it's probably interesting to, uh, to to talk a little bit more about Australia here. But we are globally focused. That's again uh, very driven by the fact that we are very focused on those areas where the challenges are particularly large and where our technology provides high benefits, which then allows us to grow and to earn good margins. So the two projects I would like to highlight there, which I mentioned very briefly, would be one project that were under implementation in the Middle East with our partner Nasser. So that would be in the oil and gas sector. And we have a very strong partner there in Nasser. So we see that as a very large growth area to help the oil and gas sector to become much more energy and water efficient. Um, and a second market to emphasize there is nutrient removal in China. So in China, we have a project that's actually operating now, but we're still working on uh, commissioning of part of that plant. And that is a market of nutrient removal where China is very, very large as a potential market given very strict regulation. But the US, for example, is also a very good market for us where we see our technology having very substantial benefits to what's out there right now. Well, and that's all we have time for. It's, it's a fascinating story. We can see the growth. Good luck out there. We'd love to have you back on in six months' time or so. Um, have a nice weekend. Thank you, Tim. Same to you and same to everybody.